So in this video, we're going to take a look at multi-factor authentication. As you can see, I'm already logged into the classic Azure portal. Uh, as of right now, this is the only place to access these settings. So let's take a look at my domain here that's already set up, my Active Directory, and we're going to click on Configure. Once we click on Configure, this will pull up a list of options for us that can, we can configure for our entire Active Directory. For purposes of this demo, however, we're going to scroll down and click on Manage Service Settings for Multi-Factor Authentication. Once we've launched our Multi-Factor Authentication service settings, we can look at the options here. First of all, I can allow users to create application passwords to sign in using non-browser applications. I can set a list of trusted IP addresses for my work environment, so I can tell Azure Multi-Factor Authentication what are trusted IPs. I can set up options for my verification, whether that's a call to a phone, a text message to phone, notification through the mobile app, or even a verification code from the mobile app. And then I have the option to allow my users to remember multi-factor authentication on devices that they trust. Now, when selecting this, this gives the user the option to select a checkbox that says, do not ask me for multi-factor authentication from this device for the next number of days. In our demo environment, this is set to 14 days. Let's enable this and change the setting to seven days and hit save. Now, once we've saved our settings, we can go into the advanced portal and take a look at more of the multi-factor authentication settings. You'll notice here that we have the option to view a report, configure multi-factor authentication settings, or even download the full multi-factor authentication server. As a licensed user of Enterprise Mobility and Security, or even Azure AD Premium, you have the rights to install multi-factor on-prem should you need to do so. Let's take a look at what settings are available. So let's click on configure. In here, we have some general settings, allow a specific number of attempts during a multi-factor authentication call before we deny it. Say extension digits when prompting for extensions. That's only if you're running on server. Uh, the caller ID phone number, as an Azure AD Premium subscriber, you get to select what caller ID phone number you're coming from. A two-way text message timeout one-time bypass so what is my default one-time bypass in seconds so by default it's set to 300 and if we're setting one-time bypass to use notifications we can specify an email to have those notifications sent to we can also allow our users to submit a fraud alert which would mean that we would notify our it folks or partner or whoever that may be instantaneously about a fraud that has been notified or has been reported by the user and then finally, we have the option to set an account lockout if you're using PIN mode to lock the user account out after a specific number of consecutive multi-factor authentication denials. So these are our settings. So now the next question is, how do I set up an app to leverage multi-factor authentication? So in order to do this, let's go back to our directory and let's take a look at the applications that we have. In this case, we'll go and take a look at box. This is the dashboard view. Let's click on configure and inside the configure, Here's where we have our settings for multi-factor authentication. So I can enable multi-factor authentication for this one specific app simply by clicking on the on button. Select if I want to apply it to all users or specific groups. In this case, we'll select all users. And then I have some options. Either we require multi-factor authentication all the time. We can set it to require multi-factor authentication when we're not at work. Or if you're really strict about accessing this, you can block access when not at work. Now, it's very important to note that if you're going to block access or require multi-factor authentication when not at work, it is important to go back to our other multi-factor authentication settings and ensure that we configure our trusted IPs so that Azure multi-factor authentication knows exactly where we're coming from when we're doing work. So now that we've set up our service settings, let's take a look and see how we can enable a user for multi-factor authentication so that every time they log into our service, they have to go through a multi-factor authentication. So first we're gonna click on the users link here. Next, we're gonna select which user we want to enable for multi-factor. Let's just select our first user here. You'll notice when I click on the check mark, on the right-hand side, we get information about the user. In the quick steps, I can enable this user for multi-factor, but let's take a look at the user-specific settings that are available first. I can require the selected user to provide contact method again. So when they registered for multi-factor the first time, I can override those settings and force them to register a second time in case things have changed or if we think there may have been a compromise. I can delete all the existing app passwords that have been generated by that specific user. And I can restore multi-factor authentication on all remembered devices. So that option to remember this device will effectively be cleared the next time the user goes and tries to log in. To enable this user for multi-factor authentication, a simple click of the word enable, enable multi-factor authentication, and updates have been successful. The user is now enabled for multi-factor authentication. And you can see 
with the user now that Arif shows that he is now enabled for multi-factor authentication. So that is multi-factor authentication inside of Azure, including uh, conditional access and multi-factor access for a single application.